We've been talking about de-stress over the last couple of weeks, and we talked about how stress is, is not going anywhere, okay? Stress isn't leaving. Let's just be honest. Stress isn't leaving. So I need to quit asking stress to leave, and I need to learn how to healthy manage it God's way in my life. So we've been talking about how to have a healthy view of stress. Uh, today, can, can I take you a little bit deeper? Turn to your neighbor and say, get ready. We all deal with stress. We turn to other things to help us deal with the stress in our life. We try to cover the pain. We try to cover the stress with our own addictions. Look at this quote by Dr. Ann Lemke. Dr. Anna Lemke. She says this, because we've transformed the world from a place of scarcity to a place of overwhelming abundance, drugs, food, news, gambling, shopping, gaming, texting, sexting, Facebooking, Instagramming, YouTubing, tweeting, the increased numbers, the variety and the potency of a high rewarding stimuli today is staggering. The smartphone is the modern day hypodermic needle. Oh, isn't that good? I know. Some of you say, oh, we got to get it today. It becomes a modern drug, delivering a digital dopamine 24-7 for a wired generation. So no longer today do we have a conversation about those people because we are those people. This message today isn't for those people. This message today is for all people in this house. We've all become those people. Well, what do you think about when I say this? I know you know the answer. No pain, no. No pain, no gain. But we don't like dealing with the pain, do we? We'll go to any means to cover up the pain. We'll go with any means to deal with the pain. We'll go to any means to medicate the pain. I've learned something over 30 years of marriage. Women have a much higher tolerance of pain than men. I remember when we were giving birth to Preston, our oldest son, we went in and they hooked my wife up to an epidural and we got ready and then to come find out as she was dilating that the epidural didn't take the way it was supposed to. And so she said, can you please fix that? They go, honey, it's too late for that. We're going to have a baby. And so we had childbirth without an epidural for the first experience. Now how many know that my hands were a bloody mess when we got done having this baby? Because I was holding my wife's hand. And she was like, I can't do it. I said, yes, you can. I'm screaming at her, you can do this. She's digging in her nails. And my blood's running down my hands. But how many know I didn't say a word? My hand was hurting for days. But I was like, I ain't about to say a word right here. How you ladies can get these human beings out of your body. Scream and holler, be drenched in sweat, agony, the worst pain you felt, and then all of a sudden smile. When it's done, they go, oh, yeah. There, there's something about the high tolerance of pain you have, but I don't have it. Most men don't have it. How many know good habits are hard to develop? Good habits are, are not easy to develop. That's why we really have to work at developing good habits. Why is that? The, the, the pain is now, so the payoff isn't until much later. Good habits makes pain now, and I don't get the rewards until much later. So therefore, it's not enticing to work through the pain now. It's much easier to cover up the pain. It's much easier just to do something different. You know, if I want to diet and exercise, the, 
lose weight and get healthier. I don't like that because it's a lot of work, a lot of pain. And many times I don't see anything. It's been four weeks. It's been six weeks. It's been eight weeks. I still am not seeing hardly any change at all, if any. It's a lot of pain. I'm losing sleep. I used to sleep in. Now I got to get up and do this. I used to eat what I want. Now my wife's making me eat all these green things. I don't like it. But if you stick with it, what happens? You stick with it, and over time, the reward comes later. The pain is now. And so we rather just give me what I want to eat now, right? I'd rather just do my own thing now. See, good habits are painful, then the reward. If that be the case, then bad habits are just the opposite. The payoff is now. I indulge now so I can escape the pain. But the pain shows up at the end. See, it, it, whatever I indulge in now, it helps me temporarily escape the pain, but the pain's waiting for me at the end. At the end of the high, the pain's still there. At the end of coming sober, the pain is still there. At the end of trying to escape, the pain is still waiting on me. But I'm escaping. See, good habits require pain now so that I can escape the pain later. That's the difference. And we want to self-medicate. We want to do all kinds of things. And really, this is the beginning of addiction. All of us. And what I say today, can I just ask you this question? What's your drug of choice today? What's your drug of choice? What do you use to escape? Your phone, 24-7? I think we all try to use that to escape. Vicodin, opioids, and shopping, and TikTok, and Instagram, and Facebook, and YouTube. Porn, success, money, status, sex, relationships, video games, bitterness, control, marijuana, alcohol, gambling, politics, Netflix. I mean, the list, we could be up here all day just naming things that we look to escape to. We now have an endless supply of things to escape with. We now have an endless, used to, you, you had to find somebody to help you. You had to find somebody to help you get the things to help you escape. Now they're at the touch of your fingers. Now we have an endless escape, and now we're trying to self-medicate our pain. We're trying to self-medicate ourselves Instead of dealing with our pain and dealing with the problem, we want to self-medicate. Some of the things I named off, and there's a lot more, some of these things, let's just call them all drugs to a certain degree because we're self-medicating with them many times. Some are more harmful than others. Some are more harmful in nature. Some are more natural. and Some are taboo. Some are even socially acceptable. But they're there. And all these things that I mentioned are not necessarily bad by themselves. But when we use them as a form of escaping reality, then it becomes an addiction in my life. You can be a person, all you want to do is binge Netflix all the time because that helps you escape the reality that you're alone and you don't like it. You don't want to deal with the being alone so it's easier to escape into a world. Teenagers, it's easier to escape into a world of video games than a reality that I need to grow up. A reality that I need to take responsibility for my life. A reality is uh, we don't like the pressure, and so we self-medicate. It's easy to find things. Well, Pastor, uh, it's legal. If given the option, let's be honest, if given the option to escape pain, we will all take the option. That's, that's, a true, that's the problem. See, if given the option of... I can do this now to escape the pain. We'll do this now. But the bad news is this. The pain is still waiting on us. Pain is still there. 
The real question is not, what is your drug of choice? You, you already know that answer. We, we already know what our vices are. We all, we all know that here, and we all have them. The real question is this, what are you hiding from? What are you trying to escape from? What, what pressures in your life are you trying to avoid? What are we using to avoid things in our life that God wants to deal with in my life? Are you trying to hide from things? We try to hide from loneliness. We try to hide from poor self-image. We try to hide from feeling like a failure. We try to hide from past hurts. We try to hide from rejection. We try to hide from abuse. We try to hide from shame and guilt. What pain are you trying to self-medicate today? What thing are we, we using? Well, pastor, we, if you got an addiction, you just need to try harder. Can I tell you no? I, I listen, if you got willpower, great. That's great. But it, today's message is not about trying harder. We need to stop trying to harder and we need to let God heal our pain. That's the real question right there. Why isn't God healing our pain in our life? Because we're medicating it, self-medicating the pain in our life. We're self-medicating the things we're trying to get away from. And therefore, God's not dealing with it in our life because we're not dealing with it. And so what's happening is we're avoiding the real issues and we're living our life not only stress from daily stress, but then we got the stress of things we're avoiding and managing daily stress is one thing, but the stress of what's going on inside of us. I'd rather escape, Pastor, than deal with that. I'd rather escape than to deal with that pain. It's too hard to bear. I get it. It's a pain for a reason. It hurts. But we need to let God begin to heal our pain. Amen. Look at this. God won't heal what we won't face. I can't face it. You don't have to face it alone. He said, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yo, I am with you always. I even give you my spirit. Listen, you're not just anybody. You are not alone. Even though you may feel like you're alone in your mind, you are not alone. I don't have to escape because I'm alone. No, God is with you and he is willing to heal you. But he won't heal us if we continue to try to self-medicate and escape. Can I, can I tell you that Jesus understands? He really does. Let's go to our text in Matthew 26, verse 36. And stay with me now. Let's read the story of Jesus praying in the garden. Then Jesus went with them. Remember, he's about to be crucified. So he takes his disciples into the grove called Gethsemane. And there he said, sit here with me while I go over there to pray. So he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he began to anguish. And he was in so much stress. He told them, my soul is what? Crushed. My soul was crushed with grief. Anybody relate to that today? Pastor, that's why I'm avoiding my pain. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. That's what he said. And he went on a little further and bowed his face to the ground praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering, let it be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done. Not mine. Then he returned to his disciples and he finds them asleep. He said, Peter, couldn't you just watch and pray with me for even one hour? Just keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to the temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time. He prayed, my father, please, if impossible, take this cup away from me. Unless I drink it, you will, your will be done. That's what he said. Take it away, but your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping again. They couldn't keep their eyes open. 
So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Jesus understood trying to escape. He said, Father, if I can escape this pain, let it be. But not my will, but yours be done. What was the cup he was talking about? Can I tell you the cup he was talking about was more than just physical pain of going through what he would it was tremendous physical pain, what he was about to endure at the cross, having the stripes, being beaten, and having his hands and feet nailed to the cross and suffocate. It was horrendous physical death. But this cup was more than just a physical pain. The Bible says he had to carry the weight of all the sin. All the sin of the world was upon his shoulders on the cross. He knew that the Father was going to have to turn his back to him. He knew that those closest would be the ones who'd reject him and drive the nails. He said, Father, if there's any way, any way to escape this pain, let me please. But yet he was fully God, but yet fully man. The fully God side knew God's plan. He knew Resurrection was only three days away. But he still said, can I please escape the pain? The man side of him, the flesh side of him, wanted to escape the pain. Jesus understands wanting to escape pressures and pain. But yet, he said, not my will, but yours be done, Father. Three different times he said, let me escape the pain. Let me get away from this. Look at this, Jesus chose what God wanted most from him rather than what he wanted now. See, Jesus wanted to escape the pain now, but he said, not my will, but yours be done. I wanna get away from the pain now, but the most important thing, Father, is your will be done in my life. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Father, what do you want most from me? Have you ever asked God that, God, what do you want most from me? Instead of, what do I want most from you or want most from myself? Have you ever prayed that prayer, God, what do you want most from me? What do you choose for me, God? Not what I choose for myself. We run from our pain, never dealing with our pain. We self-medicate the drug of our choice. As long as we are numbing our pain, God's not healing our pain. As long as I'm trying to numb my pain, God's not going to heal my pain. Medication helps me deal with pain, but it doesn't take away the root of the problem. See, there's an issue, the reason why I got to deal with the root of the problem and not just be on medication all my life. I I know that that maybe you've been prescribed a lot of medication in your life, and I'm not saying medication is bad, but at some point you got to deal with the core issue because the medication is just covering up the symptoms and not dealing with the core issue in my life. And so when I'm self-medicating, is what happens with, I'm not dealing with the core issue, I'm just numbing the pain. Could I tell you this, God didn't die on the cross and go through all the pain he went through to set us free for me to live a slave to my pain, for me to live a slave to my failures of my life, to live a slave to guilt, live a slave to bitterness, to live a slave to abuse and rejection, to live a slave. He didn't die on the cross to set me free so that I could self-medicate all my life. You're more than that. You are an overcomer. Listen, you got, what's that mean? That means you got to overcome some things in your life. God expects you to overcome in your life. He gave his life. He sent the power of his Holy Spirit. He is wanting to heal you, not just medicate you. He's wanting to bring freedom to your life. He's wanting to bring healing to your life. But he won't heal what I won't reveal. It's heavy, Pastor. This heaviness inside of us, if you've got a heavy burden that you're medicating, 
If you got a heavy burden that you're carrying around, if you got a heavy burden there, just think about how much lighter you're going to feel when you lay it down. Just think about how much better you're going to feel when that's off your shoulders. Just think about how easier you're going to run your race when you've gotten rid of that baggage in your life. There's a reason why he wants to take that from you. He wants you to run your race light like we talked about. But he won't deal with what I won't reveal. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30 says this. And then Jesus said, come to me. All who are weary and carry heavy burdens. He goes, I will give you. That sounds like he wants to do something in my life. If you're carrying heavy burdens today, I want you to know he wants to give you rest. If you're carrying a self-medication, if you're medicating yourself all the time to escape your pain and your problems, he wants to give you rest. He goes, take my yoke, put it upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. He goes, my burden, my yoke is easy to bear. The burden I give you is light. If you're carrying heavy burdens, Jesus wants to take that from you today. If you're carrying a heavy yoke, he wants to take that from you today. He wants to begin to deal with the things we are medicating. He's wanting you to be set free today. The good thing about my drug of choice is it almost works. It helps me escape the pain. It helps me escape reality. But it doesn't lead to healing. It almost works, but the pain always shows back up. And the more I do it, the more it takes to keep covering up the pain. Why? Because I'm not dealing with the pain. I'm not dealing with the real issue. Your addiction is not your problem. What are you trying to cover up? What are you trying to escape? If you're willing to get on the OR table of the great physician, he will heal your heart. He will heal your soul. He will bring rest to your mind. He will bring rest to your body. He will bring healing to you. He will take years of damage and heal your heart and restore your life. But you got to allow him to heal. He won't heal what I won't reveal. What I hide, he can't deal with. He won't deal with. I, I've got to give it to him. I've got to willingly say, God, this is me. I got to open it up and give it to him. He wants you to be free. Why? Because free people, free people. He wants you to be healed. Why? Because healed people, heal people. Willpower is great. But we don't need more willpower. We need more God power in our life. We need more God power in our life. You've been trying to do it through willpower. Some of you are strong and you've, you have broken some habits in willpower. Only to go back to them again. Only to change one bad habit to another bad habit. Well, I quit doing this, but I started doing this. Hear it all the time. I quit this bad habit to, to take on another bad habit. Why? Because we're not dealing with the issue. What is the real issue? What's the real issue of hurt in my life? What's the real issue of insecurity in my life? What's the real issue in my heart that I haven't revealed? What's, what's the real issue that God's wanting me to do? We just need to repent, Pastor. You're right. But repent doesn't mean I'm just asking for forgiveness. I'm not, I'm not telling you you need to repent for forgiveness, because true repentance is not only asking for forgiveness, but it's turning away from. 
See, we, we need to turn away from the drug of our choice. We need to turn away from the drug of our choice and quit trying to self-medicate the things in our life. And we need to say, God, I'm coming to you. God, I'm getting on your operating table. God, I'm going to your presence. God, I'm going into your presence right now. There is where my burden is lying. There is where healing takes place. There is where my breakthrough happens. There, addiction is broken off. There, I'm set free. What are you trying to escape today? What are you trying to cover up? There is healing for you. As physicians come back, we're going to go back into some worship in just a minute here. I want to read you a few scriptures as we close. Galatians 5.1, look what it says. So Christ has truly set us, what? Free. Now make sure that you, what? Make sure you stay free. What's that mean? That means he paid the price for our freedom. He didn't pay the price for your freedom so that you can walk around always addicted to other things because you're self-medicating. A slave to those hurtful things. A slave to that self-image. A slave to that mistake. A slave to that abuse. A slave to that rejection. A slave to my greatest fear Slave to my greatest hurt and disappointment. He wants to set you free. Psalms 147.3 says, our God, he heals. If you don't know this, you need to know he, our God heals. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. Psalms 34.18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Do you see the pattern here? He comes to us. He wants to rescue the brokenhearted. He wants to set you free. He wants to mend your wounds. He wants to heal your wounds. And when you allow God to heal, it's the best healing you could ever have. I'm telling you, he can do things that nobody else can do. He can heal the heart that nobody else can heal. The last scripture in Isaiah 61.1. I feel a lot like this scripture today. For the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that the captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. I want you to know today, God doesn't want you a prisoner any longer. What are you medicating today? For some of you, maybe you have a real medication problem. Maybe the painkillers have gotten out of hand and maybe just what you use to survive every day. Maybe the thing that's legal that you're smoking every day to escape has gotten out of hand in your life. Maybe the one glass of wine you drink at night has turned into a couple of glasses every night and I can't survive without it. Maybe I, I can't face reality so I'm constantly doing other things to Take my attention away from reality because my reality hurts. My reality stinks. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. His desire is for you to be healed. God's at the very heart. It's not only to free us from our sin, but he wants to heal our wounds. He wants to heal the broken places in our life. You're a child of God. He wants to heal you, but he won't heal what you continue to medicate day after day.